Don't you just love a beautiful lush lawn? I do too, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't have one. Our lawn took a beating this year. So today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix it. So this lawn is basically the part of the lawn that we look at the most and probably use the most too, frankly. Um, and it looks terrible right now. So let's start with what happened here, which is I think a combination of factors. This is one of those factors. This is probably the main factor right here. In fact, this particular one. So you guys know that we have dogs and uh, you know that dogs do a real number on lawns. And uh, unfortunately, somehow our dogs basically train themselves to walk out the door and go to the bathroom on the very first available piece of grass. We probably should have not allowed that to happen when they were young, but that's the way that the story goes. So there's not much I'm gonna do about it right now. So this part of the lawn takes a beating anyways, but this winter it took a particular beating because in addition to them just going to the bathroom here, this area got covered with a fair amount of snow and what happens is that the dogs trample on that and so it becomes ice and so it becomes this layer of um, just compacted ice nothing can breathe under there so i think what happened here is a combination of um, dog dorothy hi anyway so i think what happened here is a combination of dogs going to the bathroom in this area a lot of traffic just a ton of traffic for winter and it could have been people as well as dogs but traffic was a big factor and then i think we also maybe dealt with a bit of snow mold in this area too um, snow mold is a fungus that um, basically forms underneath a layer of snow or ice um, so i guess at this point the why doesn't matter as much as the how in the world do we fix this so I'm gonna walk you through how we do this, but I think before I do that, it's important for me to just talk to you a little bit about my lawn philosophy, because uh, this lesson in how I do this is not probably gonna resonate with people who want a golf course type lawn, a beautiful striped lawn. I'm not saying I don't love lawns that look like that. I'm just saying that that's not my MO. And that's because as much as I would love a beautiful, lush, perfect lawn, I'm not gonna lie, those are beautiful. Um, I'm just not going to use the chemicals that it takes to achieve that look. So my goal with a lawn is to have it green. I don't mind if there's clover in it. I don't mind if there's a few dandelions in it. As long as what I'm seeing is green, I'm pretty happy with it. So I take a fairly loose approach to lawn care. In fact, my approach to lawn care is I have very little to do with it, to be honest. I pretty much manage gardens. Mr. Much More Patient likes to manage the lawn for the most part. But this sort of falls into the plant realm because we're gonna be doing some planting here. So the very first thing we have to deal with here is getting rid of this dead lawn. So I'm gonna use a rake and we're gonna rake this all up and I'm gonna essentially scarify the soil as much as I can here so that we're gonna be able to have some soil exposed to grow something on because clearly nothing's growing on it right now. So I have a regular metal rake and then I have this guy, this beast, which is a dethatching rake, and I'll probably use a combination of two of them. By the way, the, wait, the reason we waited until now to do this project um, is because I wanted to wait until the soil was warm enough to actually germinate some grass seed. If you try to do these projects too early in the year, um, you're just not going to get anywhere with, with um, growing grass from seed. It's actually why usually you know the best time to actually seed a lawn is fall, um, or overseed a lawn is fall, because the soil's nice and warm. Um, which is not necessarily the case right now. So, but anyway, we've waited a little bit um, to a point where it's warm enough to get some grass seed to germinate. So if it looks worse before it looks better, that probably means you're like halfway through. Um, okay, so I am gonna veer off course. Um, this is obviously not an organic product. This is a starter fertilizer and I am gonna use that because I just really need this lawn to get going and kind of quickly because if we don't get this lawn more or less established, it's gonna be very hard to keep the dogs off it. I mean, we obviously need to keep the dogs off it while it's growing and take care of it from then on. But the longer it takes to get going uh, and really um, fill in, the longer this is gonna be an issue and they're gonna go kill somewhere else. So um, starter fertilizers, what you're looking for is phosphate. So this one actually has, um, this is a 24254 is the NPK breakdown on this. So you guys, phosphate is, um, not good 
because phosphate, if you have too much of it, it just flows right into waterways and it creates um, all sorts of LJ problems and things from phosphate. So really the only time you should ever think about using a product that's got a lot of phosphate in it is probably something like this. And make sure you follow the directions really carefully. You don't need to lay down any more than what you're gonna need. Um, then we're gonna get to seed and I just wanna quickly talk about grass seed. So to me, grass seed is the most important part of this whole thing and I will tell you a lesson I have learned time and time again. Do not buy cheap grass seed. Cheap grass seed is one of the biggest mistakes you can make in your garden. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that because I can't believe I care enough about grass. But we have done this before and it, it's patchy. It doesn't match the rest of your lawn. Uh, a lot of times you're buying an annual grass and so the next year you have no lawn. Um, so what I would recommend and what I did is go seek out some information about what the best kind of lawn for your area is because this is one of those things that varies dramatically depending on where you are in the country and what your conditions are like. So I know you guys probably get sick of me talking about going to your public universities and stuff, but they do have a ton of fact sheets out there. I mean, technically your tax dollars are paying for some of this, so you might as well take advantage of it. So I did go to the University of Wisconsin website and they have a whole thing on growing lawns and they say that the best type of general lawn in Wisconsin is you want a lot of bluegrass and some fescue. So it is very hard to find that. Most grass seeds have a ton of rye in them because they come up quick and they look good. And the breakdown on this one, you won't be able to find this in your area. It's turf perfect. And I think it's a blend that that feed store actually, it's the only place I can find it. So I think it's a blend we can only find at that feed store. But the breakdown on this is, um, is basically 60% um, bluegrass, 20% creeping red fescue, and then another 20% ryegrass. Can you tell how windy it's gotten here? What a day to be laying grass seed. Okay, next up, break it in. Okay, now you need a mulch. Now I've used straw before, just buying a straw bale. There tends to be weed seeds in there, and then you're dealing with weeds in your lawn from the get-go. I've also bought this like sterilized, chopped up stuff. That stuff works pretty good, but it's kind of a mess. So now I'm trying this stuff. Have you seen these things before? A lot of times you see these sort of blue pellets. I think it's recycled paper. Um, sometimes you can buy this mixed in with the seed. I've also seen this, like professional landscapers use this stuff. My gosh, it is expensive. Fortunately, at the nursery, I was able to find a busted open bag that seemed to have most of it um, intact. And so I was able to buy, um, so I was able to buy a bag at a discount. Um, so we're gonna use this this year. So I'm gonna mulch on top of everything uh, before we get to the next step. And I bet you know what that is. Okay, so I think you all know the next step here. Water it. This is the problem with starting lawn. Like you are a slave to watering. So twice a day, basically, unless you get some rain, uh, morning and night and of course if you have dogs you can't walk on it so you got to make sure they don't walk on it so we'll also have to block off this area okay so this is lawn by air it's not professional it's certainly never going to result in a golf course type lawn but if it's green and filled in i mean that's that's pretty much a win in my book if you have some suggestions of other ways to do something or something you would have done differently, please leave that in the comments. And you know, in terms of care of this, obviously we're gonna keep watering this. We're not going to mow it until it's pretty high. And then of course those first couple of mows leave it very high. Really, honestly, that's the best thing you can do for your lawn. And we're guilty of not doing this all the time. But the higher you can mow your lawn, the better chance the grass has to grow and the fewer weeds you're going to have because the grass will outcompete the weeds. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes we sort of cheat and like we just don't feel like mowing so often. So we just kind of go shorter, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. And then we will um, we will also fertilize here with malorganite soon. So we use pretty much malorganite is the only fertilizer we use. 
Um, that's an organic high nitrogen fertilizer. It also serves to keep the deer out for a little bit as long as it smells. Um, and it's a great fertilizer for your hostas too, in case you were curious. So we will malorganite the whole lawn at some point, um, but that's about the extent of lawn care for us. So um, I, hope you, I hope you found something helpful in here and I hope you're having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon, bye.